You're welcome to Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. A series of cautionary tales for lovers of squeam. I call this tale, this terrible tale of lupine revenge, Wolf Child. <coughs> 300 years ago, in a northern land ruled by myth and fear, stories were told of wild wolves that ate babies. The last of these wolves was killed by a man called Egan McQueen. The wild wolves never forgave him. And now, they are back! <laughs> Today, on the edge of the Darnaway Forest, live the descendants of Egan McQueen. Elspeth and Callum McQueen, their eldest son Garth, and their newborn baby Moira. We must take great care with the baby said Callum. Never let her out of your sight, for the wolves need only a moment to snatch her. Are the wolves close? asked Garth. Nothing to bother yourself about, son. Tis only babies they take. You mean Moira? They might take Moira? <gasps> cool. Garth had a problem with his baby sister. Ever since she'd arrived in the house, nobody had paid him any attention. Especially his mother. It was as if he'd become invisible. Maybe if he behaved like a baby, his parents would start noticing him again. That's not a bad idea. Actually, it was. It was a dreadful idea. But not in a way that Garth could ever have predicted. From that day on, Garth behaved like a baby. He sucked his thumb on the bus. Wah! Wah! He insisted on being carried round the supermarket. Will you behave? But I'm tired. Wanna sit on your shoulders? No. Garthy wanna sleepy bays. And stop talking like a baby. Mamsie's cross with me. <coughs> Garth, will you stop? Everyone's looking. Carry me then. He threw tantrums at dinner. Don't like vegetables. Poo! He tried to sleep in his parents' bed. Me and my toys are scared of the thunder and lightning. He strawberry jammed the kitchen wallpaper. That is blood, what is coming from his head. And he was sick in the car. Sorry. I don't know what's got into you, Garth. I think what got into me was all this chocolate I ate. I don't mean that. I mean all this baby stuff. If you don't grow up quick, son, the wolves will be coming for you. Oh. It was as if the forest had ears. That howl brought Garth to his senses. Maybe his father was right. Behaving like a baby didn't make his parents pay him any more attention. And what if it did attract the wolves? What if the wild wolves came while he was pretending to be a baby? Instead of Moira, they might take him! <laughs> but that night, nothing had changed. Mummy! Daddy! I'm scared of bad wolves! Baby want a cuddle! Mummy! Daddy! Come and save your baby! Goo goo gaga! Goo! No! No! 
I'm not a baby, really. I'm, I'm, I'm ten years old. I'm nearly a man. I, I only wanted attention from my mummy and daddy, but I'll stop now. Please, I will. Take my sister instead. She's a real baby. No, don't go away. <laughs> <sighs> that was it. Garth was definitely giving up baby for good. Unfortunately, it was a ickle bit late for that. <laughs> Outside his bedroom window, a noisy dustbin rolled across the mud and stopped by a freshly made paw print. And above it, snagged on the wire, a clump of grey fur. Garth climbed out of bed to investigate the noise, but as he swung his legs over the mattress, he got a nasty surprise. His feet didn't touch the floor. In fact, they were coming up to meet him. By the time he had walked over to the sink, he was too small to see over the rim. And when he pulled up a chair to stand on, he had to use a skipping rope to climb onto the seat. He was shrinking. Something else had changed, too. Oh, no! The eyes. No joking this time. Garth needed his mummy and daddy. Help! Save me from the wolves! But his words bubbled out as a string of gurgle and spit. He tried to stand up, but his legs weren't strong enough. He could crawl to the door, but he couldn't reach the handle. Mummy! Daddy! But his parents only heard a baby. Goo -goo. Goo -goo. Is that Garth? Ignore the stupid boy. He's just seeking attention again. Which was why Garth's parents ignored him all the next day when he lay on his back and screamed and screamed and wet his trousers. He only stopped screaming when his mother stuck a dummy in his mouth. But when his teeth and hair fell out, even Garth's parents started to worry. You're not acting anymore, are you? No, Callum, no. Don't you see? He really has turned into a baby. The descendants of Egan McQueen heard a howl from outside. <gasps> Moira! Elspeth had left the pram in the garden. The two of them ran outside expecting to see their baby girl flopped in the jaws of a child-chomping wolf. But the pram was exactly where she'd left it. Oh no! What have we done? They've got in behind us! Garth! But by the time they realised that Garth was alone, the wild wolves had already exacted their revenge. <laughs> wolves are cunning creatures who hunt in packs. While one wolf howled a distraction out the back, another slipped in through a front window and snatched baby Garth by the nape of his neck. And that was that. Nobody has ever seen him since. It is thought that the wild wolves took Garth into Darnaway Forest. But what they did then is a mystery. Maybe they ate him. Maybe they raised him as a wolf cub. I think they ate him. I mean, who's ever heard of a child raised by wolves? Not me. <laughs> 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 <laughs>